Johnny told the Tory on the island, I don't feel good enough, but you are Johnny, you are. Guess what? This is like not a fixer upper, you know when you get into like these houses and it looks like a piece of shit and then you're like, oh, let me like fix it and flip it and make money off of it. Wrong, this is like, okay, you invested your time, you try to like praise him and, and, and say you're amazing, you're amazing. And this blew up in her face. All right, we are going to jump right in to talk about the Bachelor in Paradise finale. This was bananas. Um, you know what sucks is that I'm all the way in Tenerife, uh, Canary Islands. That's not the sucky part, right? I love living here, but I don't get to see it until a day later. So if I go on socials, thank God that Bachelor Nation, they're like, spoiler alert, so I didn't want to see what happened. So listen to me let's just jump right in because there's a lot of gold in the episode i it doesn't matter if you don't watch the show i really suggest you do because you can learn a lot from it and from all the mistakes that they really make it's bananas okay so like f let's first start easy okay with aaron and genevieve okay poor things um the thing is that it's the very immature you know, and they don't have a healthy way to communicate. They really don't know. And so they fight a lot and they think it's love and it's back and forth. And it seems it's just very toxic. And, and this is something that I really stress when I talk about the crazy love method. And it is not crazy in the sense of toxic. And oh, I don't know if he loves me today, loves me tomorrow. No, it's a crazy love where you can be completely real and authentically, zenfully you. So you're at peace. You feel like you're at home, like this safe place. And Genevieve, I felt like she really wasn't being understood or heard, you know, and I think that Aaron just lacks a lot of maturity and an experience in really connecting on that level and showing up for somebody. It's more for him, like who's right, who's wrong. And he will insist on that. And I think that, you know, you should keep that in mind when you're connecting with people and you want to form a healthy relationship with someone it's not about, oh, I was right, I'm wrong. It's just about saying, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. And then listening to them and really understanding each other. You know, it's not about the right or wrong. Like you need to leave the pride at the door, you know? Um, so yeah, Aaron and Genevieve, obviously that went bye-bye. <laughs> they, they broke up. Um, and actually on that note, Aaron did tell Genevieve, on the breakup, he goes, you left when things were getting hard, you packed your bags. And it's interesting because for me, what I always stress to everybody, to all my clients and to you, right, is that you want to have a person you can always rely on. And for him, it didn't feel like he could rely on Genevieve because when things got heated, she was packing her bags and leaving the island. So I do feel like there's this beauty in Aaron saying that. And I get that. I get, you know, so I, I have that compassion for him, but he's also very immature and, and so is she, and they have a lot of growing to do, you know? Um, okay. Stop everything. Danielle and Michael, I can't even stand the cuteness. They both lost their like last previous significant other. Um, you know, Michael's ex-wife, the only other person that he said, I love you to had passed away, the mother of his child, James, and Danielle had been engaged and her ex passed away as well. Um, and I believe it was a drug overdose. So it's a d totally different loss, right? Um, which I love how self-aware Danielle is. She is so empathetic. She is so aware of like her situation and respects him and has so much patience. And um, I love what she said. She says she feels really safe with Michael and says he's a super bright light. And, you know, even saying that I get chills, you know, because this is something that I am so about that you have this beautiful light and you want to find a partner that sees it and wants you to shine. And Danielle sees that light in Michael and it's, it's like, she feels it's so special and she just never wants to dim his light. And there's a, there's a level of security that you have to have as a person 
where you feel secure in yourself that you're not feeling, oh my gosh, am I good enough? Uh, Oh my gosh. And you are dimming their light with your maybe bullshit insecurities. Danielle's not like that. She's gone through a lot. I think she's 36 years old. She knows who she is. She knows what she wants. And she appreciates an amazing man when he comes along. And they are absolutely precious like they're so adorable and on the stage when they like came back to like you know talk about the finale you know he finally said to her he said i never said i love you to anyone else but his ex right that passed away and he told her right there on the stage that he loves her and it was the cutest sweetest oh my gosh hilarious response from her but she absolutely adores him and loves him too so that's amazing way to go bachelor in paradise making people like getting people together and actually them finding love you know because that's something that i was like oh my god it would suck to like have this show and nobody finds love, right? <laughs> that would suck. Like, yeah, it's entertaining. But at the end of the day, we are all rooting for love. You know, like we're all wanting that. So I was so happy for Danielle and Michael. So much cuteness. Okay, we need to like talk about Victoria and Johnny. Okay, so I, I hate to say it. But actually, I don't hate to say it. I'm so happy <laughs> that I, I called it. Um, spoiler alert. Okay, you guys. Um. Victoria and Johnny, I told you, right? What happened in the last, if you missed the last episode, you got to hear it. When I talked about Bachelor in Paradise, Victoria and Johnny, Johnny talks about her checklist and he's like, that's not how it should be. There shouldn't be a checklist versus love and then we'll figure everything out. And I said, that's not how it works, Johnny. Well, guess what? Um, Jesse Palmer, the guy that is a host of Bachelor in Paradise, he asked Victoria, what went wrong because johnny proposed to victoria she says yes but then they break up a couple weeks later and he asked her what went wrong and it's interesting how she had said oh that's a million dollar question and i'm like is it really a million dollar question because it's really not that difficult honestly like you know i know i sound like an asshole i don't (laughs) care you guys The writing was on the wall. Victoria didn't want to talk about the real shit. And then when they go to the real world and all of the things start to come up to the surface of how he's so not right for her, they start fighting. He he starts disrespecting her. He starts calling her names. He says she should be cleaning and cooking like a woman should. Like, I feel if she had asked some serious questions about, hey, how's your relationship with your mother? Hey, um, what's her role in the house? What do you expect out of a woman? Like, you know, of your wife. And he had a whole thing that he said about, oh, um, you know, commitment. And oh my God, that's so hard to do. And, And him saying, I don't feel good enough. And she would say, Victoria would tell Johnny, you are good enough. You are. Listen, ladies. Listen to me closely, okay? When a guy tells you that he is, he feels like he's not good enough, that's when you say, bye-bye. I know it sounds cold-hearted, but I don't give a shit because you don't have any time to waste. You really don't. And that guy needs to do a lot of self-work to get to a place where he's confident in himself. How can you expect him to show up for you right? And to be in a healthy relationship when he can't even face himself and be happy and secure in that. This is why it's so important that I always work with the women and say, let's do that self work, that inner work, that reflection. You have to take that time to get to a place where you really love yourself and you're confident in yourself. And you can then, after you're feeling that fulfillment, then you can, okay, I'm ready to get into a healthy relationship and I know how that looks like and I know how I can show up for them because I'm already showing up for me. Johnny told Victoria on the island, I don't feel good enough, but you are Johnny, you are. Guess what? This is like not a fixer up or, you know, when you get into like these houses and it looks like a piece of shit and then you're like, oh, let me like fix it and flip it and make money off of it. Wrong. This is like, okay, you invested your time. You try to like praise him and, and, and say, you're amazing. You're amazing. And this blew up in her face. This just cost her extra time. 
You know, and I just, at the end of the day, you guys, I've been in these relationships in the past where I see that guy, oh my God, I can fix him. Have you been in a relationship like that? Right? I know you have. <laughs> I know you have. We all have. But this is something that, okay, yes, you have. But how can you prevent that from happening again? So I really hope Victoria, and this is what really scares me at the end of the day. Jesse asked her what went wrong. And she's like, well, that's the million dollar question. I don't think she really clearly knows. Like she still doesn't know. Like I hope that Victoria listens to this podcast episode and is like, oh my gosh, that's what I should have done. I should have asked the real hard questions on the island and freaking stuck to my checklist. You know, uh, it's just interesting how she said something about that. She was like, oh, it's not about someone said that. Oh, yeah. Earlier when she was happy and they got engaged, she was like, oh, my gosh, it's not about a checklist. It's about love. And that blew up in her face. Understand something. It is so important to know what you want, know what you deserve and have it clear in your mind and write it down. You know, she just threw all that out of the door and set out the window and was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna not ask anything and not dig in and just blindly, this is love, that's bullshit. And what happened to them? Yeah, they broke up and not only that, it was nasty. Like they're on the show and he's trying to make it out that she cheated on him and she didn't and he's just immature. Because this is something that I have to tell you, his feeling of him not being good enough will destroy that relationship. If you are dating a guy that doesn't feel like he is good enough, right? He's insecure. Anything that you do, well, you're cheating on me? Well, because everyone else is better than me. What, what business do I have to be with this amazing woman? Oh my God, I'm not good enough. She must, she must be cheating on me because I am nothing. Do you see like poor Johnny, I kind of feel for him, right? Like he needs a lot of therapy. He needs a lot of, and, and, there's, and there's something wrong with that. I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, you need therapy. No, that's, I love therapy. And I do think that, you know, a big part of when I work with women is that whole part of inner work and Johnny needs to do it. But you know, it's absolutely even crazier. <laughs> it's hysterical. The guy, when he goes outside, Johnny's like so upset, trying to accuse her that she's, you know, cheated on him because now she's in a happy uh, relationship, you know, because they aired, they, they recorded this like five months ago. So now she's really happy with some other guy, Greg. And so Johnny's upset. He goes outside. Okay, listen to this. And who is the person that's going to give him advice? Okay, Tyler. And Tyler's this other guy that was on the beach and he ended up dating Brittany and it all went to shit in a handbasket. And that's a whole story that's not even totally even like revealed. I don't even understand it. But at the end of the day, Tyler is not in a happy, healthy relationship. And he is not telling Johnny what Johnny needs to hear. Johnny needs to hear, hey, you need to do some work on yourself. You need to stop pointing the finger at her. How did you, you know, fuck this up basically, right? What did, what could you have done better? Take accountability, right? Wait a second. You didn't feel good enough. Maybe you're all in your head. You dev, you know, you destroyed this, right? He's not saying any of that. Tyler's telling Johnny, oh yeah, we know who she is. You, we know it. You, you know, we know how she messed up. She, you didn't do anything wrong, Johnny. And guess what? Johnny's going to keep going through this pattern. And if he keeps surrounding himself with people like Tyler, okay, Tyler still needs to do his own work. So what is he doing giving advice to Johnny? And why is Johnny listening to him? When you guys are out, right, in your, in your life, right, and you're hanging out with people and you're going through something, please ask advice from people that are where you feel like, oh my gosh, that would be so nice to be where they're at right? So Johnny right then and there, he's going through a breakup or he's going through a heartache. He should be asking one of the people that are in a happy relationship, like Michael, right? Or Serene and Brandon, which we'll get to in a second, but not freaking Tyler. <laughs> like, come on, come on. And this is something that I see so many people, period. But think about it right now. 
Who in your life are you taking advice from? Like, are these people like in a place that you really love where they are like, oh my God, I love their marriage. I love their relationship. And this is where I would love to find my person and be at that. Or are you taking advice from people that are single, miserable, jaded, have been like, they hate men. They're all like bitter. And they're like, you're never going to find anybody. Like, who are you talking to? Who are you listening to? I really hope you're listening to me <laughs> because because I am in a very honestly sincerely happy place. I've been married 15 years, married next month, right? And I can tell you when you find your person and you find crazy love for real, it is absolutely the most beautiful thing. It is so just like everything and it's worth finding, right? And it's out there. And I'm going to tell you to never settle for anything less than that. Like, I feel like it's my obligation, you know, like, I feel like I found it and this is how I found it. I love space to meet it. Like the universe can give me my person. Right. And too often people are telling you, oh no, it's so hard out there. Dating is so hard. Just get the first guy that like likes you. Oh yeah, whatever. You know, do whatever you want him to do. Like, what the hell are we doing? Like, no, it's, that's fear. They're so scared of, oh my gosh, no one is there out there for you. So might as well settle for the first asshole that comes your way. And no, you're not going to do that, right? You are not going to do that. And I feel like I need to be in your little pocket. This is why it's a big part of why I want to do this podcast twice a week. I was like, I want to be in your pocket. I need to be your Jiminy Cricket. Like I want, I need to be that voice that I don't think, you know, people are saying it enough, you know, like when your ex is calling you and you're scared that there's nobody else out there. Like I want to be that person that reminds you that, oh my gosh, there is crazy love. There is somebody out there and I'm going to wait and I'm going to, and I'm going to give an opportunity to the universe to give me my person, Right. Oh my gosh, I hope you're feeling this. I hope you are getting this and learning from Victoria's mistakes, you know? So now Victoria is with this guy, Greg, and I don't know, I really hope Victoria has learned from her mistakes with Johnny, right? I hope that she has asked Greg the real questions because now Victoria has a tattoo with uh, Greg (laughs) and they both were showing it on the show. And I'm just wondering, Victoria, did you ask the questions? Oh my God. It's just so sad. Like, I really hope she's not stuck in a pattern. Right. And she's never, you know, this is something that I was doing for years, getting a relationship, right. Um, seeing some red flags, sweeping under the rug that blows up in my face. A year had gone by months go by, whatever it is, time gone by, get out of that. I'm sad. Boo heartbroken, next relationship, on and on we go, red flags, I didn't find out, has this happened to you? And you're like, back and forth, another relationship, back and forth. And you know what? I really hope Victoria looked at herself on that video and was like, oh man, I could have done things differently. And I don't think she did. Because when Jesse said, why did this go wrong? She really looked like she doesn't really know. And that sucks. I really feel like it's so important to be aware and and to reflect and be like, what was my part in this? What could I ha- what could I have done? You know? So yeah, that's Victoria. And okay, we're getting to the the happy part. Oh my gosh, stop. Brandon and Serene. Okay, and then we're gonna wrap it up. But this is like the so sweet because what I love is that this they they talk about a fairy tale. She mentioned, I always imagined a fairy tale, like when I was a kid. And this blows, like this surpasses everything I could have ever imagined. And they immediately connected on the island. They talked about real and deep things from the beginning. They have crazy love. You, If you watch the show, and if you are wondering, like, what does this all look like? I really suggest you binge watch that Bachelor in Paradise this last season. 
and see what I'm talking about. See what it looks like to be immature and not understand with Genevieve and Aaron. Look, see how you're not, how Johnny and the whole checklist thing, like look how these are perfect examples of what not to do, right? And then Brandon and Serene is like, oh my gosh, it's like that crazy love that you don't even question. Like, like I knew they were going to get married and like, sure enough, you know, they, they, you know, he proposes and it's the sweetest thing. And I love what Brandon said. I wrote it down and he wrote, there's never a perfect time to get married, but there's a perfect person to marry. I love that. I don't know if he made that up, but I love that. And I felt like that's so true. It is so true. And he was like, this is it. Like, this is the girl. This is, he said, that's my best friend. Like, and it's so true. You are marrying your best friend. You know, that's what you want. Um, they said that they're soulmate. I'm never going to take this for granted. That, that is, these are the things that they were saying, Brandon and Serene. Um, and I just feel like they're so deserving of love. And I think all of us are, um, but I love so much more is that they can feel that blessing that they feel like, Oh my gosh, I have found this more. It, it is better than anything I could have ever imagined. And I will honor it and respect it and, and not never take it for granted. And they have that level of maturity, that awareness, and that's why they're going to last like a hundred percent. My money's on Serena and Brandon. <laughs> You guys, there's a bet going on. <laughs> I would have won. You know what's so funny is that when I was watching this episode and I was like, oh my God, Johnny proposes. I was like, there, it's just a matter of time they're going to break up. Like I knew it. Like I, I would have bet so much money on this since the last episode, right? And um, yeah, sure enough, they did. And I love that they talked about it right there and then. You know what I mean? Um, I hope that you are learning from all their mistakes and learning from the wins I, and if you hate Bachelor in Paradise or don't want to get into reality TV, it's fine. I totally get it. All I care about is you, right? Hearing these real stories about these people and making sure that you go out in the world, shine your light. Don't waste time on the wrong guys like freaking Victoria, right? And make sure you ask the real questions, right? Okay. And with that, I will leave you and I'll see you next time. And Remember, it has to be crazy love or nothing.